Welcome to our 360 degree image thumbnail tutorial for Flutter. This is a beginner tutorial that uses full size images and just makes the images smaller for the thumbnail. To improve the responsiveness, we do use cache width and cache height for the thumbnail so that when you go back from the full size image to the actual thumbnail view, it's pretty quick. This is the second video in the series. The first video covered the panorama viewer that you're seeing and starts with a completely new or blank application. The images are stored locally, which is why the thumbnails are coming up pretty quickly, even though the thumbnails are full size images. In this other example here, we have 260 thumbnails. It's coming up over the network using list view builder. We don't cover this technique in this tutorial. Usually the thumbnails come over the network as smaller images. However, the process is not standardized. So depending on where you get the images from, pulling the thumbnail over a separate URL may not work. So this tutorial covers all images. So another example of pulling the thumbnails over from an API where the thumbs are embedded into the image itself. At the end of the last tutorial, we had a single image that we could use and scroll around. We have about a dozen images that's stored locally on the drive in the assets slash images folder. All the images are freely available. The process to get the images was covered in the previous video. If you want to start at the point where we left off in the last tutorial, you can go to GitHub under the commits. The tutorial one is a separate commit, so you, you could uh, use that specific commit. And the end of this tutorial will be under the commit tutorial two. Panorama Viewer is straightforward. It just has a child that's an image. To move between the different screens, so the thumbnail screen and the full size screen, we're going to create two screens, the home screen and the thumbnail screen. Since I already have the home screen as a separate widget in the main.dart, I'm just gonna cut and paste it into the new file, home underscore screen dot dart. So we're gonna have two files for the screens one is the home screen, which is going to list all the thumbnails that we want to have in our application. The second screen, which will jump from the thumbnail to the detail screen, will have the full size panorama. Because we broke up our basic Flutter application into two separate files, main.dart and the home screen.dart, we need to import the home screen into the main.dart file. Now we're going to make sure that it works and then we're going to create our second file. And you could theoretically put it all in one file, but it makes it more difficult to understand when you're reading the code yourself and for other people. So the detail screen with the full size image, we're going to call image underscore screen dot dart. We're using all stateless widgets in this application. And we'll call the widget image screen. It's red because I need to import the material flutter. So we're going to place a container with a scaffold so that eventually we can build an app bar and use the built in back arrow on the app bar to go from the main display screen with the panorama back to the thumb screen. For the body of the scaffold, we'll start off with the panorama viewer. Panorama Viewer does require a child, which is an image. At this point, we don't have the image inside of our widget. We're going to have to pass it in in the future. So right now, we'll first take care of the back arrow by putting a app bar onto the scaffold. And by default, the app bar will have the, the little back arrow. The image screen will have to accept a image so that we can display it within the panorama. So after we take care of this app bar, 
you don't need to put the title or anything at this stage because we're just looking for that back arrow or we'll create a, a final variable of type image and we'll just call it image. So this would be the 360 image in the two to one aspect ratio. And now the const constructor is red because we need to have it accept the image. So we'll go this dot image and put a comma there. And now we can pass the panorama, the incoming variable image that we're going to pass it when we call up the image screen. So now that we have our full panorama screen, which is pretty simple set up, we can now start working on the thumbnail. So under the general lib folder, I'm going to put components. Although you might want to create a, a subfolder view and put components and screen in that same subfolder. But within the components folder, if you want to follow my uh, basic architecture, I'm going to put thumbnail.dart. I'm going to create it as a stateless widget. So STL, and then it will automatically complete if you're using the VS Code extensions. And unlike the, the image screen, the thumbnail is going to accept an image path. And that's because we want to set a different, the cached width and the cached height of the image because the thumbnail is much smaller than the full size image. We'll accept the image path of the string. And I'm going to set up the width of the thumbnail to be the full width of the screen. So this is only going to be a mobile application at this stage. So it's going to be the full width in portrait mode of the mobile application. To get the screen width in Flutter, I'm going to use the media query. You could rewrite this to be more efficient by passing in the uh, screen width or the, the size of the thumbnail that you want. However, I'm just going to put it into the thumbnail file itself for simplicity. And this media query uh, size.width is already built into Flutter. And when you're displaying the thumbnails, there's going to be multiple thumbnails. You generally want some type of padding between the different thumbnails. So I'm going to use the padding widget from Flutter. And I'm going to set only vertical padding between the different thumbnails. You use a different technique if you're using Flutter's grid view builder, but this is a pretty simple technique. So we're just going to create the thumbs with the padding in the thumb itself and then drop them into a list view. And within the vertical padding of three pixels, we're going to set up an inkwell as a child of the padding. And the, the child of the inkwell will be the image. There's different ways to get the, the thumbnail to be a button. I've used Inkwell in a number of projects and it has served me well. So I'll show you this technique again of using Inkwell. And the child of the Inkwell will be the thumbnail. So we're going to build the thumbnail from the image.asset. We already have the image path that we're going to pass into the thumbnail from the main list view. And we're going to set these two properties of the image. It's built into Flutter. It's the cache width and the cache height. And the reason for this is that if we don't specify the cache width and the cache height, when you go back from the full size image back to the thumb screen, there's going to be this lag. And because we're using the full size image itself as the thumbnail, we didn't resize the image to be the thumb. Um, the image is pretty big, especially with the 360 images. They could be like 8K, maybe 5 megs, maybe maybe more for a single image. The 360 image is going to be 
in a two to one aspect ratio. So the height of the image on the thumb will be one half the width of the image. We're gonna set the width of the image to the width of the screen on the mobile phone. And so the height of each individual thumb will be one half of the width of the image. It's also one half of the screen size. The tilde and the division sign is to truncate the, the last um, floating point. So the cache width and cache height are integers. They're not, they're not doubles. And then we'll set up the on tap, and this will cause us to go from the thumbnail screen, which is the home screen, to the more detailed screen, the image screen. And we, we're not gonna use go route, we're not gonna use any type of routing. We're just, cause there's only this one link in the tutorial. We're gonna use the rather, I don't know, it's, it's a little cumbersome link, but we're gonna use these navigator.of context, context, then push it, and we'll set up the material page route here. And if you do have many routes in your application, I would suggest using Go Router. But because there's only a single link in this tutorial, we'll just use the material page route builder that uh, comes with Flutter. The Go Router is a separate package. So when we click on the inkwell, which is the thumbnail, it's gonna go to the image screen and then we're gonna pass it an image. And because the thumbnail itself has the image path, we're gonna to have to build the image to pass to the image screen. That's pretty straightforward. Again, we have our images in the assets folder, so it's stored locally within our application in this tutorial. So it's simply image.asset and then the image path. It's simply the location of the image file on your, in your local project. Now we'll just make sure everything looks good in our little thumbnail. We'll go back to the home screen. And remember, we just had a single uh, image uh, for the la at the end of the last tutorial. So we're gonna put up a, a list here and put multiple thumbnails here, and then we'll, we'll go over to the additional screen. Because a lot of mobile phones, they have the little, the selfie camera on the front of the screen. I'm gonna wrap the the list view within the safe area, and the safe area is just some padding that Flutter will calculate so that your list view is below, you know, the, the little cutout on the front of the screen or the selfie camera. And we're gonna use a list view instead of a list view builder because we only have about 12 or 14 thumbnails in this tutorial. If you have hundreds or thousands of thumbnails, you should probably use a list view builder, but it's a bit more complex so to focus on the core elements of the, uh, of the thumbnail for this tutorial, we're just using list view and not list view builder. Since we now have our thumbnail as a separate component, we can rapidly build up the list. We're keeping our file names separately. If you wanted to use the same technique and have maybe a few dozen of these images, what you do is you call the images the same, but have a number at the end. So like image or thumb image 01.jpg, and then you set up a loop to get all the images within that directory. But for simplicity, for this tutorial, we're just going to go one by one and build up the list manually. Once you have your thumbnail in a separate component here, like a separate widget, you can then make your application much more scalable, either with local assets or pulling it over from the network. So the debug uh, warning in the upper right hand corner is kind of obscuring the thumbnail. And for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll turn it off. In the main.dart file under the material app section, there's a Boolean flag, a debug show checked mode banner. If you set that to false, you'll get rid of that debug. So now we have the thumbnail that we can use as a navigation um, button to switch between the first screen and the second screen. And then we're using the built-in back button of the app bar 
on the detail screen to go back to the home screen. Then we'll just manually add the rest of the thumbnails in. It's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, you know, you could put the images that you like. You can just find them on the internet or take them yourself. And so we'll just quickly maybe fast forward this a bit. Um, so you add one in, you just check it, and then you add another one in, and then you check it. 